the book of first Peter <clears throat> start at verse one for as much then as Mashiach hath suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased so like you have ceased from sin verse two that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of Yahweh Verse 3, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, 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 lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Verse 4, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to Yahweh in the spirit. Verse 7, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. It's the book of Second Ezra chapter 9. Begin at verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the sign, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, verse 2, then shalt thou understand it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Skipping to verse. Four. I'm going to start at three. I'm going to keep going. Verse three. Therefore. I'm going to get to the point. Verse five. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end and the end is manifest. I want to start off by giving all praises, all honor and all glory to called Loyam, La Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Rachakotas Bukatam. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as uh, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akwap and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners. Um, from Shalom to the Israelite foreigners abroad in the land of the other nations which appear like the other nations, but subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. It's the brother Yahweh up out of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant coming at you with another lesson through the spirit, through the power of Yahweh Shimei Shai. So basically, um, doing a lesson, I had came across this article, on, uh, I don't even know what publication this is, but um, I saw it, I think it was on a news feed or something, Elon Musk on Optimus Humanoid Robot Production and Price, Less Than a Car. So, um, his spiritual, because the brother, uh, I think his name is Karataza, um, the elder brother from uh, Vegas. I know he tends to do these videos where basically he just puts a, a group of videos together and then he'll quote some scriptures. And um, he did a video recently, so through the spirit, I've taken it like, um, you know, I hope the brother is not offended. I was going to use his video because, you know, I have a group of, brothers that follow me and um i know he got way more subscribers but you'd be surprised you know what information um the brotherhood and the, you know the body miss yeah um that's why it's always that's why i think the spirit has it'd be maybe five brothers six brothers all going out on the same topic because that's the body you know what I mean? anyhow um so without further ado i'm gonna um so I can load this video. Um, I'm probably going to play the copyright. I'm sure he wouldn't flag it because of the fact, you know, it's a brother. But at the same time, just so bear with me.
There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. Okay. What to do about mass unemployment? This is going to be a massive social challenge. Um, and I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Universal basic Uni income. Universal basic income. I think it's going to be necessary. So it's mean that unemployed people will be paid across the globe. Yeah. Because there is no job, machine, robot is taking over. Um, that, that's simply the, the. And I want to be clear that these, these are not. Uh, things that I think that I wish would happen. These are things, simply things that I think probably will happen. Um, and since, and if, the, if, if, if my assessment is correct and they probably will happen, then we need to say what are we going to do about it? And I think some kind of a universal basic income is going to be necessary. Um, now, the output, the output of goods and services will be extremely high. Um, so with automation, um, they will, they will come abundance. Um, there will be, uh, almost everything will get very cheap. Um, the, uh, it's, so it's, it's, uh, I think the, the biggest, I think we'll just end up doing a uh, universal basic income, it's gonna be necessary. Um, the, the, the harder challenge, much harder challenge is how do people then have meaning? Like a lot of people, they derive their meaning from their employment. So if you don't have, if, if you're not needed, if there's not a need for your labor, how do you, how, what's the meaning? You, do, you, do you have meaning? Do you feel useless? These are much, that's a much harder problem to deal with. think that you know the level of complexity and and uh, uh well it is it's artificial intelligence some of these machines they're scary actually when you see some of the things that they can do and sometimes i've got to say i don't spend too much time thinking about robots taking over the world but if i was to ponder it and with any kind of uh, great thought looking into some of the things that they can do, I think it is quite scary, actually. I think you've got to be careful what you wish for sometimes when you're almost trying to create the future and you're pushing boundaries all the time. Um, but a robot did take my job, by the way. I used to be a checkout girl. And as you will know, if you've been to a supermarket lately, those things are few and far between, aren't they? It's all self-service these days. Yes, but some of us would really like the checkout people back. Would you? Yes. The, self, the self service machines are far stupider than the cashier. Interesting well, about they're the more jobs frustrating. least at risk. The jobs are least at risk. Talk, um, we've talked about the jobs that are most at risk. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting how these researchers identified the jobs least at risk. They started by physicists, neurologists, and then pathologists, neuropsychologists, and then it went down to chief executives. Chief executives. Uh, and, but surgeons. But it didn't actually say politicians. So I don't know if politicians could be most at risk or least at risk i have no idea but i think it comes down to the fact that uh, as mary was saying you know the trouble is they will not have that sense of judgment that you hope a human being has so i'm not terribly terribly concerned about this i say as far as i'm concerned it's just a continuation of what we've seen for the last 200 years increasing automation which makes a lot of sense lots of these jobs are unpleasant and laborious and we'd rather uh, people weren't, the weren't having to do them i think A total of 100 robots have started their new jobs as delivery men and garbage collectors at the Lingang Makeshift Hospital for COVID-19 patients in Shanghai. They help doctors and nurses deliver meals and medicines to about 4,000 beds and collect garbage throughout the hospital. The deployment of robots can avoid close contact between the medical workers and the patients and reduce the workload of medical workers. The delivery robot has multiple cabinets and can hold up to 20 boxes of meals at once. One robot can deliver as many as 120 boxes of meals per hour. of robots deployed. Some of them delivers foods to patients four times a day. 
Some of them stand beside the nurse desk, delivering medicine to patients. The rest of them patrol around the hospital to collect garbage. After six days of the on-site deployment, all robots started to serve patients, doctors, and nurses in two makeshift hospitals. With the help of robots, the work in the hospitals can be offloaded. We wish our work could help improve the service quality of the hospital and help doctors and nurses cure patients better. So far, the first batch of 2,000 patients has been discharged from Lingang Makeshift Hospital after recovery from COVID-19. This is how they're serving the food at Denny's. Please take your food. Wow. Wow. Enjoy. Are you kidding me? This is the way they're serving the food now at Denny's. Wow. Welcome to Dallas, Love Field Airport. All Ubers, Lyfts, taxis, and rental car shuttles are located on the lower level. To access the lower level, please use an escalator or elevator to proceed downstairs. Uh, so <clears throat> again, that was the brother. Um, I believe his name is Elder Brother Karatasov from Vegas, or a brother from his camp. Like I said, I know from time to time I watch him a lot, or I watch his channels and uh, his channel and um, his channels because we have all had to make another channel. And you know, um, where you know from time to time, his videos where there is a group of different videos put together, scriptures added. And I wanted to give the proper respect because I utilized the material he he created or whoever on his page created. But saying all that to say this, like I said, I, I just found it fitting because I came across this article like yesterday or the day before. 
And then he did a video like yesterday or the day before on the same topic. So, um, And the scriptures tell you in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 about least Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. Um, over at camp, we were bringing out how the most high revealeth onto, um, you know, his friend these mysteries and these secrets, you know. We're seeing the world for what it is, you know. Um, it talks about um, in Amos 3 and 7, surely the most high revealeth his secrets to um, his servants, you know. Tells you, Yahushua called, um, he said, no longer are you servants but friends. Because, you know, you reveal the secrets onto your friends. So saying all of to say this, you know, it's not coincidence that, that right now they're coming up with a, a solution be, with all these, you know, this robotic workforce. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be a multitude of reasons why. They're expecting a lot of people to die out. They're expecting a lot of people to refuse to work. Why do you think this is the first time in history, you know, we, we, we talk about a society, especially in America, that never literally wanted to give anybody anything, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the stimulus wasn't what you thought it was, you know, it was in order to keep the economy afloat for the, for, I mean, basically for, you know, to let things go along to, you know, basically set it up more so for the time that they, you know, want to crash this thing, you know, and that's pretty much what it all, all it has done, you know. Now you, you 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 got the economy suffering inflation to the point where it goes into free fall, and then you know, like I said, you're gonna have just um, hyperinflation until it crashes the dollar. So you know, um, and the thing is, like I said, people you know siding behind Putin and you know China, and, and you know they're heathens as well. Putin is an Edomite. You know what I mean? You know, Putin is into you got the digital ruble. You know what I mean? <laughs> like so, this system, no matter you know, put it like this. If the heathen was to get the rulership, it would be bugged out just as much as Esau. You know, you know, like the elder Yashawamba from Dallas always makes a statement. He said, he never said this was a good plan. It's a heathen's plan. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a terrible plan. <laughs> it's in the fight. <laughs> you, know? Uh, you know, I mean, just like with the whole mRNA uh, vaccination uh, technology, you know what I mean? Like literally, you know. To get this shit in you, they risk like harming your body. You know what I mean? People, I think it was Elder Malcolm or it was one of the brothers that constantly posts um, news articles. He's talking about all these different athletes that fell out and had cardiac arrest, you know, from taking this shit. So let me read a little bit of this article. It says, Elon Musk on Optimus Humanoid Robot Production and Price Less Than a Car. And I believe he said that, uh, you know, this will start being mass produced by next year. You know, you already got all these different corporations that's already producing robotics. You got Hanson um, Robot Robotics. You know, that's with the dog. You know, they got them somewhere. And I was just watching um, Total Recall, the new Total Recall, the remake, um, like, yesterday morning. And, um, you know, it's funny because, um, what is his name? Colin Farrell, the guy that played um, the, the main uh, protagonist in the movie, um, the hero. He literally uh, worked at a place where they built robotics. <laughs> they built humanoid robots, which were for the police force. So whatever company they worked for, I guess they were, had a contract with the government where they were building the robots, you know, that actually policed, you know. And they show you this in all these different movies like, um, damn, what's the movie with Matt Damon? Um, Elysium, you know. You know, people literally, like, they didn't work like that. And you heard how Elon Musk began the whole, like, how the video first started off. He said they ain't going to need people to work like that. So what are they going to need people for? Elon Musk revealed the production timeline and estimated price of Tesla's humanoid robot, Optimus, when he recently appeared on TED. And then they've been doing a lot of revealing of, you know, their plan and agenda on these TED Talks. The Tesla CEO talked with Chris Anderson about Optimus and the humanoid robots future in society. Optimus production and applications. You know the first units that we, meaning Tesla, tend to make are for jobs that are dangerous, boring, repetitive, and things people don't want to do. Elon Musk told Anderson. Now, it's funny. You see how it's being worded this way, but literally in, in the video that the elder brother did, he say, shit, it ain't going to be, you're going to have most people out of work. For whatever reason, which more than likely going to be for the economy crash. You know, like you, again, I keep on bringing up the fact that you got people. I know a guy that I was just working with. He His dad left him a house. 
he was making more money than me at the job we worked at. And he, you know, because of people spending habits and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But I was just saying, like, you know, price of goods going up. So it's going to feel like you're not working. He like, it's feel like I'm not. Well, he said, I let me rephrase. He said, it feel like, it's, I said, it's going to feel like you're working for nothing. He said, it's, it feel like I'm working for nothing now. And he owned the house. All he had to do was pay property tax. That's once a year. Or if you split it up, like I think you can play twice a year or something like that. But for the most part, you know, he's not constantly being bombarded with rent every month. And he was feeling a pinch of money. You know what I mean? It get, you know, the price of gas. Like another guy that I worked with in there, he was saying like, shit, it costs. He was like basically putting gas in here each week. He was like, so basically he had to go find another job where they would have to actually up his pay willing to um, increase his pay so he could literally compete with, you know, go <laughs> to... You know, because, I mean, like you say, and what do you think going to happen when inflation is going to kick into the point where people are going to quit these jobs? It says, um, Musk estimated that Tesla will reveal an interesting prototype of the Optimus robot sometime this year and might have something useful by 2023. He predicts that Tesla will see growth in the humanoid robot project within the next two years, around 2025. Musk thinks there will be rapid growth year over year in the usefulness of Optimus. Um and, you know, it, uh, see, I, I so lock it for that, too, because I, I thought that they would be mass-produced by 2023, but he said, I guess, mass production would be by 2025. And I pray we don't got that much for fucking longer. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, if you watch some of the moves he's making, but he did make a statement that is actually true. The devil was being truthful. He said, once things are mass-produced, that's when they get cheaper. You know, it's the first prototypes and versions that's the most expensive and that goes for a lot of different stuff like when you went to the playstation what was that i think it was the playstation 3 that was all ridiculously high priced now you get to the playstation 5 and you can get one of those for like what what like four or five hundred dollars now you know that's just like you know like the first computer was super expensive they did you know as time went on and technology got more advanced and smaller Things are not as expensive, you know, like with those Oculus glasses. You know, the, those are expensive, but they're trying to get down to the point where they can literally put the neural link in you or you can get lenses. And when they're, again, they're mass produced, they become cheap. So, you know, they, and that's why he's saying that basically one of these robots will be the price of a car. And then you have your militarized versions and all that. It says, um, during their talk, Anderson and Musk took. Sometimes imagine how Optimus would function in home settings rather than a work setting. Anderson referred to Tesla's humanoid robot as a personal butler of sorts. Elon Musk referred to Optimus as much of a buddy robot with many useful applications and forms, including a cat girl. And you already know where that's going. I was just thinking before I even got to that part. You got these weird ass people that, you know, polyamorous <laughs> people that, can, you know, basically, um, you know, Call themselves, um, what's the what's the word? Um, finding satisfaction from any object, you know. Uh, so you know, yeah, you'll have your sex robots and all that shit. That's pretty much it, you know. What I mean? Oh, let me get, get this though. It says the dystopian scenario. Elon Musk also talked about the possibility of a dystopian scenario with Optimus, and you know, you gotta. Uh, you uh, what's the word? A ust, 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 ustopia and, and and a dystopian scenario with Optimus before Tesla revealed plans to produce a humanoid robot. And when you go into like that movie nineteen eighty four in the book, that was a dystopia, you know. Um, before Tesla revealed plans to produce a humanoid robot, Musk was vocal about AI's impact on human existence. And I found that funny. That was his whole um, his whole pitch. He was saying, basically, we got to grow with the technology because the AI could get so advanced that literally it could take over the world. So he's saying the way to combat that is to put the AI into your body. You 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 grow with the AI. You, you fuse with the AI. The AI. And when you go into that whole... You know, man and machine, that's transhumanism. <laughs> so that's why you got, so this, I mean, this, I mean, if you can add a spiritual eye salve, if you can actually like the Lord dealing with you to a degree where he got you awake, you know, 
you understand that this is a, a, a plan and a device of Satan. You know what I mean? And, uh, matter of fact, let me get that. Back in 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, at least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So when you go into Salaki, when you go into that word devices, Strong's G 3540, Naima. Naima. And basically it breaks down to a mental perception thought, an evil purpose, that which thinks the mind, thoughts, or purposes, or plans. You know, this is this device that they, they, their plots and plans, their schemes. What you know, this is the agenda that they have set up in their mind, which actually is the will of Yah Bashim Yah Shaz, because it ultimately tells you in the book of Job about how the, the most high God um, orders the steps of man. So, you know, it's really the most high God's plan to test the wicked. I mean, Salaki to test the righteous, Salakia, and to judge the wicked. But, you know, um, also tells you in the book of Job that um, basically his device, you know, his plan, you know, won't come to fruition. You know, he's only going to get so far with this. I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians 10. I believe it's verse 5. This is 2 Corinthians 10. It says, um, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. And bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Mashiach. And, you know, um, it talks about the fiery darts. Those are those, those, those thoughts. Because the demons can plague your mind. And that's that's when, when the elders go into, the, you know, the different levels of this truth. You know, you got brothers. Like the brother Bukhar Moff went into. He said, did you know that you could sin from a thought? You know, scripture tell you that, you know, Yahweh Shai, you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ said that. He said, uh, basically, if a man lusts of that after a woman in his mind, that basically that is as if like he already sinned. You know, this thing deep. Bear with me. I just want to show you something real quick. So when you go into this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, is it casting down imaginations? So, these thoughts, <laughs> you know what I mean? A reasoning such as hostile to the, you know, imaginations. You know, their plans. Well, it's not the same word because when you go into this. Strong's G, 3053. Like he's mass. Like he's mass. So, again, the the system that they have set up is basically where this red Hebrew Edomite um, is basically going to have a system where he's omnipotent like the Most High God, you know, Yahweh. Because at the end of the day, he has a God-like complex. Why do you think he exalts himself as the, the, the highest, you know, you know when he when he took on to you know make his symbol the eagle, and that's how you know it's the same people too. Because when you go back to the Greek, to the Roman, and to America, they all had that symbol as an eagle. Facts. When you go to the eagle, it's the highest flying bird. You know people don't even understand how big an eagle is. An eagle is so big it can snatch a goat. It's like the number one predator bird. It's the highest flying, most exalted bird. But it's the most filthiest, nastiest, disgusting, and it's a carnivore. I mean, you know, like, you know, I used to be really into animals um, as a younger man. But you know, <laughs> the point being, you know, this 
they plan a new world order, you know, is not ultimately the plan of Yahweh Shem You know, it's a new world order coming, but it's going to be ran in righteousness. It's going to be a righteous new world order. Because, like I said, when you take the time and you spiritually see, you know, it's a balance. You know, you got the, the left-hand priesthood trying to bring in a wicked world order, new world order, and you got the right-hand priesthood trying to bring in the righteous new world order. And they're spiritually doing things, and we're spiritually doing things, and there's physical things taking place on the planet. You know, uh, it's just really deep. You know, it talks about in the book of um, Ezekiel, chapter 28, about um, the Prince of Tyrese, which the modern-day Prince of Tyrese would be this red Hebrew Edomite. You know, uh, sometimes scriptures are double fold, but it talks about how he exalted himself to be the, like the Most High. You know, he sit up in the midst of the sea um, thinking he is the Most High God, but he's not a God, and it talks about how he should die like a man. So, again, being that, like I said, the Most High has given us the spiritual eye salve that we can see, call Lord Yomayah B'Shem Yashah for the gift, you know, at the end of the day, we see all the things that they're putting in place, you know, this fourth industrial revolution will lead to, ultimately, a system where everything is tracked um, digitally, which leads into that B system. In that MOTB. So this is Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 16. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. We talk about that MOTB, that um, MCHIP. And then, like I said again, we're speaking on must, and this guy's bringing all this innovation. You know, robot. Humanoid, robotic, robots, you know. And like I said, when you really, I, I mean, I'm told, I just watched Total Recall, the remake today, well, yesterday. And like I said, the shit they, they're talking about, you know, it's in the movie. <laughs> you know. He had a tracking device in his hand. It looked like a phone. But, you know, if you use a little imagination, and it's funny because he pulled it out, you know. Um, verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So without actually having that, that, that karagma, the karaks, you won't be able to buy or sell. And like that, that devil said that, that two third heathenistic nigga <laughs> that did, that was on the video that I did earlier, but it originally was posted on that Bible Defenders, um, the brother channel, the Bible Defender channel. I don't know that brother's name. He literally um, was talking about the, you know, everything in life is about buying and selling. I don't agree with that. <laughs> but, you know, everything in this world is about buying and selling. I will agree with that. So for you to function in this world, you will have to take part in the philosophy and basically, you know, have that, you know, M C H I P, you know, you know, you're gonna have to get that mark. <laughs> so if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Simul Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the laws, statutes, commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yasha. You know, judgment is coming. And if you joined on to this man, when Yahweh Shah basically comes back, you're gonna be judged with him. And with that, I want to end the lesson. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to God. Allah, Allah, Yahweh, Allah, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah, Allah, Hashem, Allah, 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 Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of great millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom, Allah, to the Akwath and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willing, this is an edifying video. Shalom, Allah, to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations. Appearing like the other nations but subscribing to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. So next time I'm able to come with another lesson, Shalom, Shalom. And Wath Labo Boy, Shalom.